some of the artists I work with, um, well, for starters, were all very diverse. Each project was different than the previous. Um, the first project I worked on was, I believe it was a group called uh, Parish. They were um, a heavier alternative group. Uh, very cool. There was like six of them, but they had no bass player, which was kind of interesting. So it wasn't something that I was used to actually being a bass player. Um, setting up the, for the project was probably pretty standard, except for the fact that we knew we needed to account for some of that low end fundamental that wouldn't be there because of the bass. So what we actually ended up doing was uh, putting extra mics on the kick drum and building a little tunnel around it with sound blankets to make it uh, boomier and beefier to kind of account for some of that low end that wouldn't be there uh, sans the bass, um, which worked out really, really well. And there was a good low end presence with that. The guitar players also played a, a, in a, a detuned fashion, I think D or C, and um, it accounted for some more low end. Um, and they had this really heavy, thick sound that really, really worked out. And had they kept all those dynamics and added a bass player, it may not have worked. So um, I think that first project was good because I was able to, to learn about um, alternate ways of doing things. Not necessarily the standard is always the best way to go, um, but to try new and different things. Uh, and also, my mentor, the one day of the session, uh, his boy became ill and he had to be upstairs with him uh, most of the day. I actually got to run that session for an entire day. Uh, and the client was incredibly happy and that made me feel good that I w had learned enough within the first few weeks of being there that I was actually able to run a session and uh, everything turned out really well. Um, after that, I worked on a project with a group called um, Lovely Crisis. Uh, they were like a punk band. They um, they were like 15, 16 years old, all incredibly talented. Um, that I took more of an assistant role on. Um, I did a lot of mic placement, uh, setting some things up, um, tuning guitars, just kind of helping out in the studio. I mean, I guess your standard intern stuff. Not every project is as involved as others. Um, I also did a project for a band called Paradox Please. They were uh, an, an, another group of young kids. They were probably about 16 or 17 years old. Um, I spent a lot of time with that project. Um, that was very cool. They had sort of a muse kind of sound and it was, uh, we did some different things like we, uh, we had the bass player played with a really heavy distorted tone so we would run it direct out the distorted uh, track and also ran a clean track to an amplifier and mic that, so we had a blend of the, uh, the direct distorted tone and the, the clean mic tone. Um, I also got an additional engineering credit on that for spending quite a bit of time with that. Um, I worked on a project for a, a fellow named Adam Sivitz, which was a, a drum percussion record, which basically he had all these drum beats in his head and he came down and basically just recorded them to a click and we layered in instrumentation on top of it, synths and horns and bells and other percussion sounds. I played cello on a song. Um, we had guest guitar players and keyboard players and singers and um, violin players. And it basically was just we wrote it in the studio and everybody had a hand in making the project work. And probably was one of the projects that I spent the most time on. Um, that was actually very rewarding because it was, uh, it was more different than anything I've ever done. Um, I did uh, two film projects with my mentor. One was um, he had me as a Foley mixer. He uh, basically did recorded cloth sounds and uh, you know some sounds for some scenes in a kitchen and bar sounds, clang of glasses and ice cubes going in and pouring drinks. And I actually did all the recording for that, which is funny because they call it Foley mixing, but I actually. I guess fully recording. Um, like I said before, he gets a lot of LA clients because he used to live out there, but um, he still 
you still maintain those clients. So whenever they have film projects coming up and they need someone reliable to do Foley, they go to him. And I was very fortunate to be able to get an IMDb credit because of that film. Um, my second film I worked on, my mentor had had a ton of projects booked, and he needed help with one of them. He needed somebody to do backgrounds and sound effects for another film. I was actually able to work on that one at home on, on my rig, and he gave me his sound effects library, and I was able to just layer in sound effects and backgrounds throughout this whole film over the course of a week um, and get that back to him, and he married it to his project file. He was in his studio doing um, all the... Um, the dialogue and the noise reduction for that while I was able to get the background audio taken care of. He had uh, so many projects going on he couldn't possibly do everything. Um, it was really nice to be able to work on it not only from home but to have your mentor trust you enough to work on it at home without him mentoring you. Um, that was probably number one as far as most rewarding projects. Um, I will have an IMDB credit because of that also. Um, and I did work on another few other projects with him, uh, one being an acoustic project, uh, a young fellow named uh, Brennan Elliott uh, won a songwriting competition, and he had about 16 free hours, and he came in with a hand percussionist and a violin player, and that was it, and they did a three-song demo, and we recorded it. I helped with some of the setups and things like that, but um, I got to mix that, uh, and when he came in, to pick up the mixes and we sat down and we threw it up on the monitors and uh, we listened to it and he was incredibly pleased but um, those first three seconds to where he's listening to the first couple uh, bars of the song and you're waiting for his reaction is really a gut-wrenching feeling so like think oh I hope he likes it but uh, my hard work paid off and he really liked it and I'm still very pleased with the project uh, it was very organic sounding and not really layered down with effects and, and such. And I've actually had other engineers that I know listen to it, and they said it was very clean and very organic sounding. So uh, I'm, I'm very pleased all around with that. Um, and also, I've gotten to do some projects on my own as a result of the recording connection. I applied to Craigslist ads. One, I got to work on a independent film that was filmed here, actually in the neighborhood I'm actually living in. Um, I got to be an assistant in the sound department um, to the sound recordist for an entire month. So I spent probably about 17 days on set, uh, which is really great, and I got to see basically how a film set works. And I also uh, am currently the sound mixer and boom operator for a local web series being produced here in Pittsburgh uh, for a fledging um, audio video company called uh, Blue Harbor Productions. Um, really great bunch of guys. It's a little comedy web serial that's very standard in uh, sitcom, you know, with the canned laughter, and, and they kind of poke fun at standard sitcom, um, how they're generally set up and paced. But uh, uh, the, the material is very funny. It's about two, two guys, best friends, who get in weird, crazy adventures, and uh, the dialogue's very funny, and there's a, an, an older neighbor who's a who's a, a big boozer and he's got all these funny catchphrases and um, it was very exciting to work on. There were about 10 minute episodes each but I'm currently the sound mixer and boom operator for that. Uh, so those are just some of the projects I've worked on uh, in and out of the recording connections.